Now, one of the finest storytellers we've run into. He's worked with many of the masters of the golden age of Hollywood, and he talks about them in a way few can match. Director Peter Bogdanovich. I think it's important to know the history of um, to know the history of any medium that you're in, involved in. I mean, I make pictures, so it's important for me to know the foundation on which everything is built. And what better way to learn the foundation of movie making than from Hollywood's most important and influential figures? Director Peter Bogdanovich had that rare privilege. I often have to pinch myself now to realize that I had the really great good fortune to, to, to associate and meet with, with John Ford and Howard Hawks and Hitchcock and Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne. Reading Bogdanovich's chronicle of the art of filmmaking, Who the Devil Made It, is like experiencing the motivations and methods of those legendary men firsthand. The title, Who the Devil Made It, comes from a conversation I had with, with Howard Hawks. You know, I asked him which films he, he had liked over the years. And he said, well, I liked almost anybody that made you realize who the devil was making the picture. Because the director is the storyteller, and he ought to have his own way of telling it. Many others had interviewed classic Hollywood directors like Howard Hawks, but Bogdanovich conversed with them as a peer. His own career is highlighted with critical successes like The Last Picture Show, starring Jeff Bridges and Sybil Shepard. It garnered eight Oscar nominations, including a win for supporting actors Ben Johnson and Cloris Leachman. Paper Moon earned four Oscar nominations, including a win for 10-year-old Tatum O'Neill, the youngest person ever to win a competitive Oscar. Bogdanovich attributes his directorial craftsmanship to the lessons he learned from the fathers of American cinema. John Ford, I asked Ford about some scene in one of his pictures. He said, oh, it was just an accident. Most of the good things in pictures happen by accident. Well, I was a young filmmaker at that time, and I thought, really? Wow. <laughs> Whew, that threw me. And uh, so I... Uh, took, armed with this comment, I, I went to Orson Welles and I said, Ford says most of the good things in pictures happen by accident. Do you think that's true? And Orson said, yes. You could even say that a director is a man who presides over accidents. After spending hours picking the brain of an icon like John Ford, Bogdanovich had not only collected some revealing anecdotes, but discovered the quirks that made him a powerful director. Ford was purposely very intimidating. I mean, that was part of his, the way he worked, was he, he'd scare you to death. So John Wayne was about as big a star as you can get, and Ford was always picking on him. Jimmy Stewart told me, he says, he says, you know, on a Ford picture, there was always somebody that was at the bottom of the barrel, you know, and it was usually Duke. One of the most revered directors of the studio era, Alfred Hitchcock, was also infamously idiosyncratic. Bogdanovich's meetings with the master were a ceremony unto themselves. Hitchcock I saw quite often, you know, he'd come and have me come over to lunch, have lunch. He was very formal. I always wore a blue, you know, dark blue suit and a dark tie and a white shirt. And I always had lunch with him. And we always had the same lunch, exactly the same lunch. And, you know, they'd call ahead of time, and I'd always say, oh, the same as always, because, I mean, it's a way of showing my affection for what he ate, which was always the same thing. It was a New York steak with french fries and some salad. Each of the directors Bogdanovich spoke with, from Leo McCary to George Cukor, had a highly personalized style of filmmaking. But the thread which connected all of them was the silent movie era. Each had learned how to tell a story with images first, dialogue second. Mary Pickford said that looking at the evolution of the art of movies, you would think that the talkies had come first because it was so much more sophisticated, the storytelling, the visual storytelling at, the, at, at its best in the silent era. But you see, these directors who grew up with silent films and who, in many cases, began directing before the advent of sound, it was, it was second nature to them. Bogdanovich spoke with most of these filmmakers in the 1960s at the twilight of their careers, but most of them continued to work as long as they could and resented any suggestion that they were past their prime. Orson Welles was very upset about, you know, my telling him that the older directors, whether it was John Ford or King Vidor, 
m most of the older directors, or Jean Renoir, who's probably the best director, that they were having a hard time getting work toward the end of their careers, uh, like D.W. Griffith also. And Orson was very upset about that because he said he, th he thought that only in youth and old age was the great work done. Bogdanovich's absorbing collection of conversations with Wells and other geniuses of celluloid reminds us of their contributions throughout their careers, not only to Hollywood, but to history itself. Peter Bogdanovich gives us a look at Alfred Hitchcock, not only from the viewpoint of a friend, but also from a director's stance. Well, now, let's take a look at the master of suspense from the point